Okay, so people have asked me, uh, why have I written a book? Well, uh, for years I've heard about the fact that everybody has a good book inside them and people procrastinate as to when they can write that book or they they put it off because they don't have time or they put it off because they don't think they have enough of the skills. Well, for me, I have never had a burning desire to write a book. For me, my burning desire has been to paint. When I was younger, that's all I wanted to do. There was three things. I wanted to paint, I wanted to sing, and I wanted to be a classical ballerina. Uh, when I got a little bit older, I actually wasn't doing any of those things. So I had a move to a Middle Eastern country in 2003. I had a very, 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 very young baby at the time. And I took that as an opportunity to give myself some time to be able to do what I want to do. I was in a, a time place where I could actually choose to do what I wanted because for the first time I wasn't, I wasn't able to work full time. Uh, I didn't have to work full time. I didn't have to prove myself to anybody. So it allowed me some freedom to be able to do what would bring joy to me. This is quite liberating and I realized that what I really wanted to do was to paint. And I ummed and ahed for several months as to what kind of thing to paint. Should I do landscapes? Should I, should I create this culture that I'm in and, uh, you know, represent it onto canvas? But none of it sparked, none of it really clicked. And so, you know, the weeks and the months went by until a suggestion was made to do faces, to paint faces. And suddenly, it's one of those kind of moments where the light bulb flashes and I thought, God, yes. I love painting faces. I would love to do that. I, I love watching people's faces. I love people's eyes. I love expressions. I love how everything can be relayed on the face, the emotions, how people are feeling, that they can look like they're thinking something but be saying something completely different. So the complexities of emotions and, and wow, to just be able to put that on canvas, that would be amazing. Having said that, I in my entire life up until this point in 2003, and I was about ooh, 34 years old, had never painted a single face. Not painted. I'd drawn them, but not painted them. So I decided that uh, if I was going to paint faces, they would have to be in the style that I wanted to paint. And the reason I wanted to paint was because I love color. I love to mix different colors. I love to put different color combinations together. I love to see how the colors move and merge on the canvas, how some colors kind of seem to dance against each other. I just wanted to play. That was what was going to give me joy. I j just wanted to play again and get that joyfulness back. And so I painted. Uh, it was a 60 by 90 centimeter canvas. And I painted my then two and a half year old daughter, Ellie. And I used color. Vibrant, full-blown, bold, expressive color. And um, this painting, when I was doing it, the first thing I had painted on a canvas in 14 years, because when I left college, I couldn't afford to to paint because I need I had debts, I had to get a job, I had to pay them off. I was following that whole line of conformity that is that is indoctrinated into you uh, when you're young and impressionable. The grown-ups around you, the teachers, the tutors, you know, they don't have or they didn't, in my case, this belief that you could just create what you wanted. That it was very much, this is your reality, you're skinned, you need to find money, you need to do a sensible job in order to get that money. And maybe if you manage to eventually be so good at your job, you can have some free time, then you can play with your painting. But for now, it's all got to go on hold, you've got to go and conform and get yourself a real job. And that's what I did for 14 years. I worked and conformed and did really jobs. So this was my breakthrough. This was my moment of, hey, I don't need to do that anymore. I, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a mum of a young girl. 
my job is is a full-time parent that's going to be fantastic enough but in the moments when she was sleeping and sometimes this may mean me getting up at three o'clock in the morning and painting until six o'clock in the morning i could paint my faces when i finished my first portrait i stood back it was it flowed, you know, constant, oh, I could do this, I could change it this way, I can put this color in, I can add that color, I can I can make that color lighter, I can make that color darker, you know, and just watching this, the three-dimensional qualities of the face start to evolve on the canvas was so exciting, it was just brilliant and her hair was blue her face was yellow there was oranges there was reds there was purples all within this painting and I just stood back and it felt so alive it looked so alive the eyes had so much life to them but for me that was great that was that was my choosing to do what would bring me joy and I did it and when I finished it I felt great and it was the first as I've said the first painting I had done in 14 long long years and I had no idea where this would go I you know I loved it uh, and my husband loved it but that, what was that to mean to anybody else anyway I showed a couple of people the painting and uh, it it just took off I I never once paid for advertising and within six months of painting this portrait I had an 18 month waiting list I had people from all over the country wanting me to paint a portrait for them it was so exciting it, you know the 18 months became two years fairly quickly just because I'm just a single person painting faces I, I you know I don't have an industry I can't ask anybody else to help me with them this was purely my talent purely my skill purely my time where I had to produce these uh, these paintings and you know after a while it, it, it I mean it, it got quite nerve-wracking to think that you know my hands had already got orders to create and and you know you started to get this doubt feeling of oh, my goodness what if, what if I what if I lose the ability what if what if it, it came so quickly what if it goes so quickly and this kind of fear set about a whole chain of events for me in terms of where does my talent come from and how and is that where it comes from is that sustainable and I realized that, you know, this opened up quite a spiritual journey for me. And and I realized that I was channeling this talent. I am holding this talent and I'm sharing this talent. And the source of where it comes from is never ending. It is, it is the universal energy that creates everything on our universe. And there is not one single leaf on a tree, there are thousands. There's not one single grain of sand on the beach, there are millions, trillions, billions, whatever is the biggest version of that. And I realized that what I was tapping into in order to create these faces is the same source that creates the leaves, that creates the grain of sand, that creates the sky, that creates the waves on the sea. It, it's never ending and I learned to release on the fear of what if my talent is just a fleeting momental you know passing skill and and I realized I didn't have to be afraid of that I just had to acknowledge where it came from and the minute I started to really delve into these questions the, the minute I started to realize that somehow it felt like I was a portal uh, that you know, this I me as a person as a physical human being could could lock into this universal energy and use this universal energy to create these amazingly vibrant faces that people when they saw them they they their jaws would drop they literally were like wow that is amazing and and I just felt so blessed to be able to do that and and when I would see you know each time I get to a point in a portrait where I think ah, I can't see the person I can't see the person oh no oh no this is the one portrait where it's all going to come to an end there would just be this sense of calm that would wave over me and I would hear 
that reassuring kind of voice of just pack it in. Stop that now. Stop the fear. Let go. Release. Of course it isn't going to be a problem. Of course you are going to see the face. Just keep looking. Keep moving the colors around. And I would look at the canvas and I'd go, oh, yeah, that's right. All those bits there, they're way too dark. I've got to make them lighter. Or all those bits are way too light. I've got to make them darker. And I would paint and I would I would change it. And then I'd just find myself going, thank you. <laughs> that's so great. Thanks for your help. And then this face, not just a face, because there was, there was always faces, but the actual face of the person I was painting would really start to come out. And I would have these amazing moments. I would always know when a portrait would be completed. And people say, how do you know when it's finished? I know when it's finished because as I'm putting the last few bits of brush and paint to the canvas, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Everything about my head tingles. My ears start to buzz as if I've got too much blood in them. There's this sense of excitement. There's this amazing kind of heightened awareness. And in this state of heightened awareness, and you, this is going to sound really mad, I can hear the person speaking to me or I can hear the person speaking because actually it's not always to me. It's almost like I have been transported to wherever that person is in the world and I am hearing a conversation or I'm hearing a trail of their thoughts, which is uh, quite spooky. <laughs> but uh, this has happened just about to the end of every single portrait I have painted and I have painted over oh probably over 60 portraits now and I you know th in fact the very last one that I've just finished as I was putting the putting the finishing touches to it I just would hear this joyful giggling this wonderful joyful giggling and I emailed the mum because we're in two separate countries and I emailed the 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 mum and I said I is is this person by any chance like a giggler uh, and you know she emailed back and said oh yeah absolutely and I thought yeah I knew that because as I was uh, putting the final touches the backs of my neck and hair were uh, tingling and alive my ears were pulsing with blood and it was like this whoosh sound and suddenly I could just hear this lovely joyful giggling and I knew that to be Jack I knew that to be uh, the portrait I was painting so for since 2003 I have just been launched into this 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 kind of channel of energy that has brought me nothing but joy and these paintings that I produce these faces that I produce are are just really well received and I have never stopped since 2003 painting my portraits they have been uh, so well received and you know people have commissioned me from from all over and it's great and it's been wonderful and I constantly uh, just kept offering my thanks offering my thanks to this energy source saying thank you thanks for these thanks for these they're great and I thought what what else am I to do you know I mean this is fantastic but what else am I to do with with this this incredible link and and suddenly again it was like there was this kind of epiphany moment where um way back way back when I was first drawing and painting when I was at college I was an art student um, at a college in Liverpool back in 88 89 something like that and I wanted to to do dancers and and there was a, a, a point in my time when I was I was particularly unhappy um, where everything had seemed to go quite wrong for me uh, and and I would just find myself sketching these dancers these dancers jumping and leaping and and just choreographing these these images and um and i and i and i really felt that i wanted to do those in fact i'm going to be really honest and open with you and totally authentic and say to you that there was a particular night in 1986 where i really genuinely really without being over dramatic felt that i just could not go on anymore 
that my life was not worth anything. And I was just curled up in a little ball of complete and utter sorrow and thought, enough. I don't want this. And this amazing thing happened because this ball of light, this energy came in to my room and I could see it. I could see this ball. It started off the size of a tennis ball and it was just like uh, those science pictures where you, you're looking at the sun and you've got this heat haze around it. And um, uh, of course, I, I just immediately thought I was completely bonkers uh and uh, and dismissed it but this ball be you know became a became a baseball size and then it became a huge kind of gym ball size and and by that point i was kind of under the covers of the bed and 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 praying that my madness would end and yes 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 this is incredible but um actually it's probably that i'm completely and utterly deranged now and and i won't wake up from this um ever i'll be in some mental institute somewhere rocking backwards and forwards and and just being you know a nut nutter but anyway this ball suddenly had a physical presence and and sat down on my bed and just gave wave after wave after wave of love towards me and and you know i can remember this was in 2000 no uh, 1986 and i remember it now i remember everything now as if it was this morning uh, an hour ago and i was told that i was loved unconditionally that that i had worth that it was up to me to find my worth and to recognize my value and but but not to give up not to give in um but just to know just to know that i was loved and and not just by this whatever this light this this energy was but by people around me i was to open my eyes to the people around that was trying desperately to love me and and was being resisted by me and at that point when i felt loved I just felt an amazing sense of joy, an amazing sense of wow, that is incredible. And and you know, being an artist, and you know, it, I was in my bedroom, and I and I had uh, a huge cupboard, not full of clothes, but full of reams and reams of paper and ink and charcoal and pastels, and and I just I just leapt out of bed. And I was like, thank you. Oh, oh my God, that, thank you. I don't, um, that's just brilliant. That's incredible. I knew something had happened. I knew something important had happened. And, and I just thought, what do I do? What do I do? And I was kind of leaping around on my feet and I could hear music in my head. And, and I, and I just got this, these huge A1 sheets of white paper out and I got, I just grabbed a stick of charcoal and I immediately started to do these dances, these dances that were just leaping up in that kind of, yes, thanks, kind of strong poses. And so that's when my starters, my dancers were born. These, these dancers were a sense of joy, a, a, a showing that release, showing that relief showing that that amazing uplifting wow kind of thing and so you know for the next couple of years i was i was i was just wanting to paint my dancers and i and i was sketching and i was drawing and i was painting and i was modifying them and i was i was you know embellishing them more and more and i went to a, a tutor that i really really respected at the time and i said uh, you know, these, these are my dancers and, you know, it's coming up to the time where I'm finishing college and I'm just thinking how great it would be if, you know, maybe I could link up with dance companies and I could paint them, you know, go around and, and sketch them and, and then create these, these, uh, these large canvases, you know, wouldn't that be great? And the, the tutor kind of looked at my work and went, um, I doubt you'll be able to do that. They show you know nothing about the human form and walked off. And in that moment, my whole enthusiasm, my desire, my beliefs in my ability just crumbled. And I thought, oh, oh well, I can't then. And it, that was it. I left college about three or four weeks later and, and I didn't paint anything again. <laughs> 
for a long, long time, I didn't paint. I didn't really sketch. I went into the real world, got myself a proper job, and uh, and then that that's what brought me to um, 2003 when I when I you know came to a different country and because of my young child and because of the employment situation and the you know you couldn't get a job here easily initially you had to be sponsored by somebody from that the country I was in so you know that's 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 pretty much how it was and so after painting again after getting these portraits back on you know and doing these portraits I suddenly thought in this moment you know what can I do what can I do what's more and ping the dancers came back and I thought wow yes I can I can do my dancers I can do my dancers so I just you know was firing on all cylinders my life was so joyful and I would have these huge like 100 by 100 centimeter square canvases on the floor in my studio uh, which was just the dining room that the family was banned from using, basically. And I would, I would just pour the paint down on the canvas as I was listening to music, and I would be dancing around. I'd be shaking the bottles up as I mixed the paint, dancing. I was singing. I would, you know, I, I pretended, you know, I was, I was doing this on my own. So I would, I would do my pose of the dancer my yoga pose and I, I would you know I would I would incorporate dance moves that I was familiar with and you know I I would be just leaping about and chucking the paint around and pouring it down on this canvas and then you know and when I would I'd have the, the the frame of the dancer you know the actual physique of the dancer on the canvas I just didn't want to stop there and and so over a course of months you know these these dancers became more and more embellished and uh oh i just felt so alive i felt so joyful i felt so bone deep happy and i i really really felt like i I'd, I'd found my calling I'd, I'd my soul was on fire my soul was lifted up and just embracing every aspect of being an artist i loved it absolutely loved it and you know this this sort of spiritual connection that I had, this this connection to this energy source, just fueled every single day, every day. And I felt, well, you know, what I've come to realize now, um, right now, because I'm reading the Twelfth Insight, was that I was just in this flow of synchronicity, that I was I was just in this this huge energy flow. Um, and it's 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 been amazing. So I basically felt that my art was a way of expressing this energy flow, a way of expressing the joy that you can feel when you tap into your your calling, when you when you find your your passion and you are able to to do things on a daily basis that is using your passion using your god-given talents using your natural abilities and and so i wanted to try and use my art to get the message out and say hey look if this inspires you if you look at this work and think wow that's incredible you know and you say something like i wish i could paint uh, it's not about wishing you could paint as such it's about wishing you could find what it is that's your niche and I realized um, the more as time went on that I really, wow, I felt so good. I felt so good when sometimes around me people didn't. And it's because I found my niche. It's because I found my calling. And I realized that, you know, what I really wanted to do more than anything else was help people. Help people get to to this place. So... I I thought how am I going to how am I going to get to share with people just how great this can be and how am I going to encourage people that that this this is available for them too this isn't just for me you know yeah I've ta I've I've it's been incredible I've tapped into this amazing source of energy and this energy fuels me daily hourly minute by minute and and because it's so amazing I am constantly in awe of it I'm constantly saying thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you 
and I'm asking the energy for things now. I've learned to ask the energy for things now. And I, you know, and I say, you know, oh, you know, I'm following a queue of traffic. And I say, oh, please, can you just allow there to be, you know, a gentle break in the traffic so that all these people can get out easily and effortlessly and safely? Because where I live, it's not particularly safe on the roads. Please, can you let them get out safe? And, and allow me to as well. Thank you. And I say thank you because... In the course of saying those words, I know I've been hurt. And I and I just automatically say thank you because I come to the end of what I've said and I've realized, yeah, you know, you've heard me. And, and you're going to do it. That's great. Thanks. And, you know, it happens. There could be six or seven cars in front of me and there's a break in the traffic and they, you know, three or four go out and then there are maybe one or two cars come along and then there's another break and the rest of the cars go out and then there's very quickly another break and I'm able to pull out and we all pull out safely, we all pull out effortlessly, we all pull out easily into this flow of traffic and, and it's amazing, it's incredible. And so what I realized that, you know, I really want to help people get into this flow, not the flow of traffic, but into this flow, into this flow of energy. And I thought, well, you know, I can try to do that when I'm talking to people, when I have an exhibition and I'm talking to people and I'm giving them the inspiration behind the paintings and I'm explaining where my dancers have come from. And, you know, that, but, but I realized that in some ways I, I you know, I'm limited to the audience I can reach with that at the moment. You know, until my artwork gets further out there and becomes more and more well known, I, I have a limited audience that can see my work. And, you know, one day, uh, and I, I, I'm trying to think when it was, it's early 2007, maybe late 2006, I can't remember, I had this idea of you know, well, actually, I, I didn't have the idea. I was lying in bed, mulling over how I can help people, and the words, write a book, write it down. And I immediately dismissed it and said, <laughs> what would I write about? Oh, you see my spelling. Um, and, and no, immediately, there was like this rewind button was pressed on, on the video of my life, and... I saw event after event after event, you know, the, the, the grouped up massive amount of events that happened since 2003 and all those synchronicities and all those, all those uh, just amazing, miraculous events. And I saw those unfold and it just kept going, rewind, rewind, rewind. It went back to, it went back to the times when I have felt most vulnerable and most afraid uh, and having somehow some strength and some guidance, some inner guidance to, to, you know, pull my socks up and get on with it. And immediately also kept going back and back and back and it went back to this event in 2000 and, no, sorry, 1986 with this, this incredible ball of light. And then it, it went back even further to probably 1976, 1977, when I was a little girl of um, eight, nine, seven, I don't know, dancing and swirling. And I remember that day so clearly even now because I remember thinking, somebody's watching me and it's wonderful because I could feel this heat, I could feel this warmth, I could feel this love. And while I was lying in my bed, just watching this video, visual image in my head, rewinding of the entire story of my life so far, and these amazing events all had one thing in common. It was this love and this light that had sought me out every time, and come and been there for me, and loved me, and guided me. And I thought, wow, that's, that's what I've got to write about. That's what I've got to write about. I've got to write about my relationship with this love and light, this source of energy that that has found me. You know, when 
in my room, in my tiny space. I didn't go to church. I, I didn't belong to a religious group. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, praying regularly in terms of what I considered prayer, which was that you got down on your knees on a sto stone cold floor and you put your hands together and you were in a church and you were with, you know, hundreds of other people or 50 other people or whatever. You know, I, I wasn't doing that kind of praying. Um, so, so how had I called this God, this energy, this, this, whatever you want to call it, Allah, love, Buddha, divine guidance, divine goddess, God, what, whatever you wanted to call, whatever this is, I had called it. I'd called it to me several times without realizing that that was what I was doing. And several times it came and it gave me love and it gave me guidance and it gave me hope. And that's when I realized that's, that's why I, I, I needed to write my book because I'm not the only one in this world that needs guidance and love and hope. There are, I'm assuming, hundreds of thousands of people that, that need that too. And so I wrote my book, and the reason I wrote my book was because, A, I wanted to show people my art, because I'm so proud of it, and B, I wanted to let people know that, you know, we can all connect to this love and light. We can all connect to this source. We don't have to belong to a group. We have the power in ourselves. The power is within us. And it's learning, learning, learning to tap into that, that, that you, the very center of you, that older, wiser, more experienced you that's been here before, your, your soul. And to trust and allow that guidance to to come more and more and more to the surface and to guide you more and more and to place you in this in this flow that when you are in this flow and you and you begin to do what brings you joy and you begin to do what you love when you can find what it is that you do love that thing that you can do over and over and over and over and over again without getting bored or or without being resentful that that is your passion that is your calling whatever it is and it's not always something creative you know your your passion could be you know to tidy up somebody else's paperwork or to tidy up somebody else's house or to tidy up someone else's hospital or to clean someone else's streets you know that seriously can be your passion your calling because it's whatever brings you joy it's whatever brings you that sense of worth and and when you develop that sense of worth when you develop that joy when you have that love for what you're doing you learn to love yourself and you learn to ex accept yourself and that is a great place to be when you begin to feel that you are worthy that you are enough and I want my book to encourage people to find that within themselves and to and to get to that place where they go wow i'm loved i'm lovable i'm worthy and i'm enough that's why i wrote the book because we are all loved unconditionally unrelentlessly by this energy, this flow, this wonderful, wonderful source. And I want to help as many people as I know connect to that source and, and, and to find it and then live an amazing life because of it. So, yeah, that's why I wrote my book. <laughs> and I really, really hope that you can you can find the time to read it and that it resonates with you or or pushes on a button somewhere pushes on a little light switch somewhere that helps you start your own journey of discovery uh, i really hope that and you can you can get my book you can access my my book if um if you go to my website www.jenny j e double n i e d e n dot com uh, 
You go to my website and there's a link there and that link will take you to the Faro Promotions who are um where you can download